Hi, this is Rick Yates, Technical Services Manager for GGS Pro and Griffin. In this short video, we're going to spend some time talking about an insecticide based white flag control program for poinsettia growers. As always, when we're talking about pesticides, it's important that uh, growers read and follow the entire pesticide label. We like to remind growers that labels change fairly often, so whenever a new container comes into your operation, it's wise to read all the way through it. I know we're going to mention products we're familiar with and, and have good confidence in. There may be other products out there that are also um, safe, legal, and effective for this use. Well, the emphasis of this video is on um, insecticides for controlling white flies. GGS Pro is all in on biocontrols, and we're more than happy to discuss a biocontrol program for poinsettias or for any other crop with you if you have that interest. Uh, no matter which way you decide to go after your white fly population, um, active scouting is really important. We need to start really scouting for the incoming cuttings and keep up an aggressive program for early detection is really important. It's also important in evaluating the control efforts so to discover what's working and what's what might not be working in your program. We definitely don't want to be coming from behind when we're talking about white flies on poinsettias. Resistance management is a high priority for us. You'll see that we're mentioning mode of action codes all the way through this presentation. It's really important that uh, we have a, a sound strategy for rotation to preserve that chemistry that's still working. And while in most scenarios, we prefer a see and treat basis um, on uh, using insecticides for white flies and poinsettias, it's one of those cases where we feel like we need to work preventatively. The uh, host and pest relationship is so strong that we uh, feel like we need to assume that white flies will eventually become an issue in the crop. And this program uh, really is based around uh, starting with a safari drench and we recommend this to be two weeks after the pinch and since that requires several weeks then from the time they're planted until the time we drench it's really important that um, if there's white flies present and there are typically at least some that you're well aware of spray options that you can use in order to hold that population down until you get to the safari drench um, on the next slide we'll take a look at some of those specifics i do want to point out that uh, whereas for many years we used the 12 ounce per 100 gallon rate of safari in recent years we have made a switch to 18 ounces per 100 gallons because especially the q biotype white fly seem to be breaking through at that lower rate rate and the 18 ounce rate has restored the original efficacy uh, when you're drenching with safari you do pick up fungus gnat control which is really helpful early in the poinsettia crop and there is some suppression of the thrips that we sometimes see while the weather's still hot and uh, so there's uh, some help from that as well it does not control mites whether lewis mites or spider mites so it's important to be scouting for them and if necessary we'll talk about some treatments that might cover uh, mites and white flies at the same time TGS Pro has taken a look at some of the data over the last couple of years that has been published on white fly control with our emphasis being on especially on products that are highly effective against the Q by type white fly since that's more challenging. Um, you can see that RICAR is near top of our list there in all the trials that uh, we were able to get data from. RICAR continues to perform extremely well. We do use the 3.2 ounce per 100 gallon rate on that. There's some other good products and Savat and Sandmite represent two different modes of action and they both add a um, mite control which is very useful as well then tigers relatively new looks promising for white flies as well um, it's in a different subclass from rycar but uh, since they're both in mode of action nine group we don't recommend rotating between the two so select one or the other you might be surprised to see avid on the list uh, we really haven't used avid for white flies for quite a while um, some of the recent uh, data show that Avid actually does a better job controlling the Q biotype than the B. And when tank mixed with an aciduractin based IGR, um, it's very effective. And it also uh, will add mite control, which can be useful in the uh, early part of the poinsettia crop. And we're not recommending a heavy use of Avid and aciduractin together, but uh, putting that in the rotation will be dual purpose. I do want to point out that uh, horticultural oils, especially um, early in the crop when it's possible to get good underleaf coverage before the canopy gets too tight, is very effective at controlling the immature stages and can be a useful part of your program as well. 
And we'll get to uh, the beginning of October, somewhere between the 1st and the 15th. This is going to depend on what your planting and pinching schedule looks like and um, when you made your safari drench, somewhere in that range. We want to apply a mainspring drench at 8 ounces per 100 gallons. And when we do this, um, this mainspring has superior longevity. I'm not aware of anything that you can drench for white flies on point set as it will last as long as mainspring. Eight weeks plus in some trials. Syngenta reports 10 to 12 weeks control um, in some of their work. So it, at the very least, we're talking about more than eight weeks of control. So from an early October application, that gets us into December when typically in most parts of the country, everything outside is frozen down and we shouldn't have reinfection from white flies at that point. There's some things about mainspring um, that are a little bit unique and um, is really the reason why we chose to go in with it second rather than first. And one, since it's not a come from behind product, we need to apply it when numbers are low. And so following a safari drench, we're fairly confident we're going to be giving clean or relatively clean point set is over to the mainspring drench at that point. And again, if, if some white flies have cropped up after the safari drench, you can refer to the um, previous slide and in terms of alternative for sprays to beat the population back down as you're applying your mainspring drench. Um, Syngenta said that it's really important that the soil is moist at the time of the mainspring application. Make sure there's good distribution within the soil profile. They also recommend a little heavier drench volume than some of the other products you might be used to, up to two thirds of a normal irrigation. And GGS Pro has a table with um, recommended drench volumes in it based on container size that is free upon request. Some growers have had good experience with Contos drenches as their first uh, drench treatment on poinsettias. And for those growers, we want to recommend that you use the maximum label rate. Now, bear in mind that um, Contos is, um, does not have a per 100 gallon rate on the label. What you're told for the high rate is that uh, 3.4 ounces of Contos treats 1,006 inch pots. For some growers, that leads to some confusion. The best way to calculate those rates, and GGS Pro has created a drench calculator specific to Contos so that a grower can call or email us with the number of pots and, and the size pots that they need to treat and we'll create the uh, injector recipe along with a recommended drench volume based on that. Just like in the, in the program where we lead off um, with Safari, we're going to make this application two weeks after the pinch. Now, Contos is slower to take up than Safari, so when you, if you need cleanup sprays to hold the white flies down until the drench takes effect, you may have to wait up to two weeks more of these sprays because Contos can take a good two weeks to fully take up through the plant. A nice added benefit from Contos that also controls mites and provides thrift control as well. And similar to the other program, um, when we get to um, early October, we're going to make another drench treatment this time with Safari, roughly six weeks after the Contos drench. If uh, the best laid plans of mice and men sometimes go astray and there's still some white flies late in the crop, we prepared this slide that has um, materials that we know are, are safe on Brax. And take a look and make sure that when you're looking for a spray to follow up a drench treatment that we're going to a different mode of action. So depending on which drench program you choose, um, your spray options for uh, Brax safety could vary there. We want to be really careful that we're not applying Safari after Safari, um, or for that matter, um, another 4A product such as TriStar. If Safari has been in your program, we want to rotate to these other modes of action. Uh, GGS Pro recently updated our point set of white flag control options bulletin for 2021. And that is free upon request from GGS Pro. If you have any questions about today's video or you'd like to request one of the bulletins that uh, were mentioned, you can contact us with the information below. And as always, if you have any ideas for future videos, we'd love to hear from you as well.